Hello everyone, welcome to Mike's Mopar Garage. Well, we're back in the shop today and we're gonna be making another video and it's gonna be a video in a series of non-destructive testing. That's a group of videos that I'm being producing that is going to, uh, where we show you various methods of testing, whether it be Magnaflux testing, Zyglo testing, ultrasound on blocks and so forth, where we can show you how to perform these services yourself and save you guys a lot of money. Now today what we're gonna be talking about is Zyglo testing. But actually, the proper testing uh, technique name is dye penetrant testing. Zyglo, as you're going to find out, is just a manufacturer that makes the equipment, and it's a it's a, uh, a product name versus a technique name. So what we have here today is we're going to be doing it on a cast iron cylinder head. Most of the time, when you have a Zyglo or a dye penetrant test exam performed, it's usually on non-magnetic parts such as um, aluminum heads or aluminum intake uh, uh, manifolds or something like that, titanium steering parts. I've done Zyglo or dye penetrant testing on uh, titanium uh, Indy cars. I was a USAC official in the 80s and I used to work on Indy cars and we did a lot of dye penetrant testing on uh, titanium parts um, for, for Indy car. So most of the time this is done on uh, uh, non-magnetic parts. However, it can be done just as well on a cast iron part such as this cast iron cylinder head. So don't be afraid to use this. It's another method or an alternative method to what we know as a technique called magnafluxing. It's something that we can do uh, pretty easily. If you don't have access to that equipment, this equipment is pretty readily available and um, it's quite simple to do. However, you got to do it the right way in order to get the proper results. So as I was telling you, Zyglo is a product name. So if you look at this can of penetrant right there, it even says Zyglo right on it. It's a product name for this particular product, but Magnaflux is the manufacturer. So a lot of times you guys have heard when we go to Magnaflux a cylinder head or Magnaflux a, 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 a crankshaft, it's actually referring to the manufacturer of the product, not the actual technique name. So in our particular case, we're going to be doing what everybody knows it as Zyglo, but it's actually dye penetrant testing. So we're going to be performing on this cylinder head today. Um, this is a Brand X cylinder head somebody gave me many years ago. It actually has a crack in it, so we're going to get to show you some real world uh, information here. So I'm going to go through the steps. I'm going to show you the proper way and hopefully some uh, tricks and techniques to save you some time and money because uh, quite frankly, some of the information that's out there on some of the other videos and the internet and YouTube uh, are kind of scary. Uh, so, uh, so here we go. So the first thing I want to stress when you're going to perform this type of a test is cleanliness. You got to clean this part. So any area within the, uh, the cylinder head or component that you want to test, you got to clean it. So if it's painted, you got to take the paint off. If it's been powder coated, you got to take the powder coating off. It has to be down to bare metal. In this particular case, a cylinder head, we took a wire wheel and wire wheeled the cylinder bowls. We got out all the oil and grease and the carbon that was in there. So we wire wheeled it really well. Then we took uh, acetone and cleaned it very, uh, really good. And then brake cleaner again on top of that and wiped it down with a really good um, lint-free rag. We then took a, um, our cleaner. Now this product right here comes, uh, this cleaner is part of the individual cans that you can buy or it is a part of a kit that you can buy. So again, it's made by Magnaflux and uh, it is actually just the cleaner that we use with these products. So you can spray the cleaner directly on the part, wipe it down. Now the thing is that anytime you clean it with a chemical like this, whether it be this cleaner, acetone, or anything like that, you want to clean it really good. Let it sit for about five or ten minutes and evaporate because if there is a crack, what could happen is that chemical, the cleaner, can actually seep into the crack and then when you put penetrant on it, it will dilute that uh, penetrant and you'll actually uh, affect and, and, and affect your results and not have as good a results as you're wanting. So put it on there, let it sit for five or ten minutes uh, and dry. Or you can take an air blower and blow it, speed things up. So now once you've got it all uh, clean, um, we're going to apply the penetrant. Now here's where the part where I really cringe when I see the videos. This penetrant right here, this can, you quite literally can paint a battleship with this one can. I mean it goes a long, long ways. It's kind of like never see. As soon as you open a can, you, probably, you got this stuff everywhere. You can see my bench. I've already sprayed some other parts and it just goes nuts. It's all over the place. So the, one of the tricks I want to show you is to, to kind of help you with the cleanup process is to just get you a small paintbrush, whether it be a paintbrush or a foam brush like this, and spray a little on it right, in the, right into a rag and just load your brush up. Now, I already know where this crack is at, so I'm going to apply just the penetrant to just that spot to speed up the process. But normally you would apply it all over the place. 
In this particular case, we're going to apply it in our cylinder, in this one cylinder. So we're just going to go ahead and paint it on in the areas where we think the crack is at. Now notice it's dripping down. We can take some and just wipe that off a little bit. But I'm telling you, this stuff goes a long, long ways. So you don't need a whole lot. Just get it good and wet. Now one of the other videos I saw said, okay, go ahead and apply the penetrant and let it dry. No, no, no. You don't want to let it dry. So this penetrant only works when it's wet. So if you're outside in the heat, if it's super hot outside, really muggy, and you put some on, you want to watch it. If it starts to look like it's drying up, just dab a little bit more on there. Now the next thing we got to do is we got to let it sit. So it's, this is what we call the dwell process. So we're going to let it set on there uh, for a period of time. Usually in an application such as a cylinder head, something like this, a minimum of 10 minutes is proper. Again, some other videos I saw said one minute, not enough time. You need a minimum of 10 minutes, 15 minutes max should be plenty of time. So we're going to go ahead and let this set for about 10 to 15 minutes and we're going to come back and show you what's next. All right, welcome back. So what we've done now is we applied the penetrant, we let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, and now we're gonna to go to the next process, this st next step in the process. So what we're gonna be doing now is that we're gonna be removing the excess penetrant. Now, you're gonna thank me right now because when you go to do this and you've applied it just with a paintbrush, your cleanup is gonna be at a minimum. What I've seen in other videos is that they treat this can of penetrant like spray paint, and they literally paint this thing with spray and good grief it gets everywhere and now all the areas like here that you don't even care about now you got to clean all that off because believe me it gets everywhere and if you don't clean it off you're going to regret it so you're going to thank me right now so what you're going to do is you're going to take a lint free rag just rag just like an old t-shirt or something and you're now just going to go and wipe off the excess okay so you just get into all the nooks and crannies and wipe off any of the excess that you can see Okay? Now once you get it to this point, I like to get a nice clean rag. And what you're going to do is you're going to take some of this cleaner and you're just going to spray it on your finger and now you're going to wipe this off. You're going to get in there and wipe it. And once you wipe it a little bit, go to another clean area and wipe it some more. Now you don't want to saturate this with cleaner. Because again, the idea is to clean the excess off the surface, not to let the cleaner get down into the crack and dilute the penetrant that may be in a crack. That's why you never take the can and spray it directly on the part. I've seen some people do that too. That's another big no-no. So don't do that. So you're going to want to clean this really good. Try to get as much of the excess penetrant off as possible in the areas in which you're going to be really concentrating your... Um, your um, inspection on. Now for the sake of the video I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I'm not going to clean a hundred percent of everything because I know where the crack is at. But I want to get it nice and as clean as possible because obviously when you're doing this exam you don't know where the crack is at. So the idea is that's the whole reason why you're doing this. So you're going to want to clean it really well because what happens if you don't and you go to spray the developer on everything's going to be red. So you only want the background to be white and then wherever the cracks got, you're gonna have you're gonna see it in red. So once you went ahead and cleaned that really good, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna apply your developer. Now the developer, all it is is it's a uh, it's a light uh, material, almost like a denatured alcohol or nap. It used to be naphtha, but now it's like an alcohol-based uh, liquid. And it's got a very, very fine powder inside of it, like a chalk. So the idea is that we're going to shake this up really good. We're going to dust the area that we applied to penetrant. Again, this is not paint. I see people just spraying it on so thick that it's wet and they got to wait 15 minutes for the big puddle to dry. The idea is to get it shaken up really good. And then once you get it shake, you know, shook up really good, you hear that marble in there, you're going to take it and you're just going to dust it. So now we're going to just dust it in the area. And what's going to happen is it's going to produce a white background to where the, um, on the part. 
And the idea is that anywhere where the crack is at, it's going to draw the penetrant back out of the crack like a blotting action. It's going to draw it out. And you should see a nice red line wherever the crack is at. All right, so now I've moved the camera a little closer so you can see. I've let this uh, developer sit for about approximately 10 minutes, uh, the 10 minute dwell time for the developer. And as you can plainly, clearly see, there's a crack right there. So what happens, this crack actually extends from one bowl, goes across, and actually goes down into the other side of the other bowl. So as you can see, by letting this sit for about 10 minutes, it's pretty uh, clear where that crack is at right there. And you can see it really well against that white background. All right, so now you can see that it's a pretty simple process. Um, it's easy to screw up, but it's a really simple process. The biggest thing that I can take away from this and biggest tip is, is on the penetrant application, don't treat it like spray paint. Don't spray it all over the place because you're going to get it everywhere you don't want it and it's going to take you forever to clean it up. Make sure your part's clean before you start. Remove any paint that's on there. Um, so if you've got an aluminum pa painted uh, intake manifold or something or suspension parts, you've got to remove that paint and get it nice and clean. So cleanliness is, a, is the uh, big key. So I hope that you learned a little bit from this video, uh, some do's and don'ts and uh, something that'll help you a little bit more. Uh, please remember to hit like and subscribe on this. Um, we're gonna bring you some more videos on, um, on uh, non-destructive testing and uh, we'll show you some different components and different parts, uh, ways that we're gonna do some inspections. I hope you like it. Please hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.